Hi, I'm Alejandra. And I'm Warner. And we live in an off-grid cabin in the mountains of the north of Spain. In this video, we're going to break down exactly how much this life costs us. We have been keeping track of absolutely all of our expenses for years now. To do this, we use an app called Monify and we manually input all our costs. By the way, this is not sponsored in any way. We just like the app. I know that you can connect these types of apps to your bank account directly, but honestly, we don't want to give anyone that type of financial information. And also, we very often try to pay things with cash. So the easiest thing for us has been to develop the habit of just inputting the costs as soon as it takes place. We're diligent with this practice because it's very important for us to know how much our lifestyle costs us. And this is because we want to have a beautiful, comfortable, nice life, but one that doesn't involve us obsessing over our income. Basically, we want to live minimally and frugally enough that we can sustain ourselves with as little as possible. At the end of this video, I'll talk a little bit more about how this affects us and our decision making, but for now, let's just get into it. Okay, 1st of January. Technically, we didn't have any cost that day because we spent New Year's by the beach, we went for a swim and on a little hike and we didn't spend any money. But like everyone else, at the beginning of the month, our bank account is always losing some cash. So I thought I would group all these baseline costs on this day just to make things a bit easier. The first cost and probably the biggest is our rent. We pay 450 euros a month on rent. I know it's a bit confusing for everyone to understand why we moved here, if we owned this house or not. So here it is, we don't own this house, but we want to. It's a bit of a special situation, which is hard to explain, but the summary is that we have a long-term rent to buy agreement. This is a great opportunity for us because it allows us to have a home regardless of what happens to the permits for our land. And it also means that our rent money and all the efforts that we put in will eventually lead to us hopefully having a really beautiful home that we can do whatever we want with in the future. It's basically like we have a mortgage, but with someone we trust. <laughs> I hope this finally explains why we're willing to put in blood, sweat and tears to make this place our own and make it a really comfortable, beautiful home. Now, because this is an off-grid home, we theoretically have no other electricity or water costs in the month. However, this is not really the case, but we'll get into those additional costs as the month progresses. Now that that is out of the way, let's get into other monthly costs that we can always count on. We are in the middle of winter and the only heating source for this house is a fireplace. Therefore, we use a lot of wood. January has been especially mild and we didn't even have to turn on the fireplace for a couple of weeks. But to make things simple, we have calculated that we use an average of 100 euros a month on wood in the winter months. We hope to reduce these costs in the future years by planning with more time and also being able to source wood from our own trees. But that's what heating costs us for now. Another inevitable monthly bill is that of our phones and internet. Because of where we live, we use a 4G router for our Wi-Fi. And also because we post videos on YouTube, that means we need a lot of data. <laughs> so our monthly telephone bill for the both of us is of 62.90 a month. This covers all the gigabytes we may need, two phone numbers, unlimited calls on those phone numbers, and additionally, because our phone provider includes it in the deal, a Netflix and an Amazon Prime account. It works pretty well so far. The 2nd of January. On the 2nd of January, we had a bit of an unexpected cost. If you watched our beginning of the year video, you saw that we had an issue with our septic tank and we had to pay someone to come and try empty it. That didn't end up working out, but we had to pay them for the travels. So we had a cost of 20 euros for nothing much, basically. I also did some online shopping that day and bought vegan omega-3, 6 and 9 oil for me and Warner to take once in a while as a supplement. I also bought ingredients to make our own vegan cheese which we're trying for the first time tastes like nothing <laughs> tastes like nothing <laughs> this cheese needs a lot of work and i bought a little christmas treat for warner the total bill for that was 45 euros and 59 cents on the 3rd of january we had another boring cost which was an online order of some supplements and liver cleansing pills that i had to get the 4th of january was the first day that we spent nothing at all but it was followed by a lot of costs on the 5th. This day we decided to go to Bilbao on a day trip with a neighbor of ours and it was a bit
bit of a special day out. Therefore, we spend quite a little bit of money. We're going to Bilbao for the day. Very exciting. It's gonna be a spendy day though, because cities are pricey. And we're gonna be eating out a lot. That's a good thing of Bilbao though, the food is amazing. The vegan food. The vegan food. I mean, I think in general the food is supposed to be great, but the vegan options are abundant and delicious. So we're really looking forward to it. First, we went to an Asian supermarket, the only one that there is in the area, and bought a lot of staples because we only get to go there every two, three months. We therefore spent 70 euros and 90 cents there. We then spent the rest of the day enjoying ourselves in Bilbao. However, we were a bit unlucky with the weather and we were caught in a rainstorm that we we were not ready for so we had to buy an umbrella that cost us 10 euros this was not wasted money because somehow we still didn't have a good umbrella and now we do we went out to eat with some friends to a vegan restaurant and spent 43 euros and also picked up a roscon de reyes from a vegan bakery which is a special cake that we have in spain for three kings day this cost us 34 euros and these last two things are really treats for us we rarely go out to eat or have drinks anymore because we're trying to save up so i don't remember having gone out in the past couple of months at all and the cake we got while well, pricey we got it because we wanted to share with our neighbors here in the area and make a little bit of a celebration out of it although i did have regrets afterwards. I think next year I'll try make it myself and see if I can do it more economically. Whilst walking around I went to one of my favorite thrift stores and bought a really nice sweater for 8.45. And finally we ended the day by going to a couple of supermarkets and getting groceries. We spent 44 euros and 16 in Lidl and 6.96 in Mercadona. So overall that was an expensive day and we've noticed that here we can spend a couple of weeks in the house spending nothing at all but the moment we get out of the valley and we go to the city money flies out the window. Of course that is normal because we only do groceries once in a while and we tend to buy in bulk but it's still a bit painful. On the 6th and 7th of January we stayed around our home and didn't spend any money. However, because they were very grey days, we had to use our generator to get enough electricity to be able to edit the video and use our computer. This happens quite often for us here when we don't get sunlight. We can kind of get by by just using a few lights in the evenings, but if we want to edit videos or use our computers we just need to turn on the generator for a couple of hours. We've roughly calculated how many days we had to turn on the generator in January, which is around eight days, but multiple times in those eight days. And we think we approximately spent 17 euros on this. On the 8th of January, Warner had to go to Celaya and he quickly went into the supermarket and spent 3 euros 56 on groceries. And the next day he bought a chainsaw sharpening kit, which cost 41.85. We then spent a few days at home, which means zero costs, until the 15th of January when we went to Santander. We went to Santander with a friend and neighbor of ours and therefore decided to have lunch out. And we also invited her, so it cost us 43.65. Additionally, when we were walking around, we saw a stand selling chestnuts and we bought some chestnuts for the group for six euros. Look, chestnuts! Again, this is a rarity for us. We normally try to not eat out, but it just so happens that in January we did it twice. These days were still quite grey, so we found ourselves turning on the generator, as I mentioned. And then on the 17th, we had one big cost, and that is Artlist. For our YouTube videos, we have a subscription to Artlist, which is a website which has all all sorts of sound effects and music that we can use. This subscription costs us 119.88 a year and it just so happens that it was charged on that day. On the 18th of January, Warner requested a sticker that is necessary if you want to circulate freely around France and we needed this because we are planning to go to the Netherlands sometime soon with our car. This sticker is a one-off buy and it costs 4 euros 95. We also made an order from our local organic farm. Show us Warner what we got this week in the organic farm. Uh, that is the that, that thing that had a weird name that we had never tried and we decided to try. Tiniest cauliflower ever. Oh, so cute. <laughs> That's the thing of organic farms. You get what you get. You don't know what you get. I'm sorry, we kind of squished you with a lemon. Mm. And I'm sorry, Warner's thumb is so gross from the fireplace. <laughs> My favorite. Fennel? Yes. We eat fennel salad with orange, it's delicious. 
Well, we got a lot. Why did we get five? I don't know. <laughs> I don't remember ordering that many. <laughs> we found some additional tiny friends and I'm moving them to a broccoli leaf. That's kind of good, like, haul for the winter, midwinter. Whenever we can, we love buying organic and supporting really cool initiatives like this one. Buying local and organic is so cool. And it came to a total of 29.65. On the 19th of January, we went to Santander again, but this time for errands, not for fun. The first thing we had to get was a propane bottle, which cost 13.98. For this house, we need propane cylinders for both our hot water and our cooking. We've kept track of our use over the past couple of months and we're using one propane bottle per month. So this cost of $13.95 is basically our cost for hot water and cooking in a month. We also topped up the petrol in our car and put in 20 euros. And then we went to do a big grocery haul. For cookie. For cookie and rocky. Feels like we have dogs, but... <laughs> We don't. In Carrefour, we spent a total of 100 euros 36. And this is a lot for us, but there was a reason. There was an offer on a lot of the products we normally buy in bulk, in which if you bought it then, you got some money back to use in the future. So we treat ourselves. Two for one. In total, we saved 36 euros that can be used at another time. Because we need to be quite frugal right now, this type of offers are really important for us and we do take them into account when doing our groceries. Finally, on the way back, we picked up our newly repaired chainsaw and that fix cost us 39.60. Another expensive day. We then saved up for some days and didn't spend anything at all until the 23rd of January. When we moved into this house, we didn't have much house stuff to bring with us. And this is because, in case you didn't know this about us, around five years ago, Warner and I sold absolutely everything we owned to go travel the world. Since then, we have lived in a lot of situations that were supposed to only be temporary, and therefore we haven't accumulated a lot of stuff. That meant that when we decided to come to this house, we didn't even own bed sheets. Slowly, I've been making an effort to acquire everything we need secondhand, but it does take a lot of time to do that. We try to buy everything secondhand because it's important for us to be as sustainable as possible. Also, it suits our budgets much better than buying things new. It just so happened that this month I was able to find two beautiful duvet covers that I really liked secondhand. One of them was 100% linen, brand new and cost me 25.68. And the other one was more affordable and cost me 19 euros 40. I really like mixing these different patterns in our bedroom and I'm really happy to have found these bed sheets secondhand. Now the 24th of January was a painful one. <laughs> In October last year, we finally bought ourselves our own car. We had to search for a really long time to find a car that suited all our needs and we're very happy with it. However, living in the countryside and with the renovations we're planning, one thing we know for sure is that we're gonna have to move materials back and forth a lot. And therefore we needed to install a tow hook on the car. This is gonna be the biggest expense of this month for sure. We already knew that when we bought this car that this is one of the things we wanted to do. Then for a while we were like maybe let's just not put it and we'll figure it out through whatever other people and, and like we can figure it out. But we just don't want to be dependent too much on other people and constantly ask for help. We prefer to just figure it out ourselves. So finally got it to work and I'm super happy to have this. Like it feels like we're much more free. It sounds stupid but it's really the case. And yeah, now we can start planning our trip for going to the Netherlands and picking up all our stuff. This was not cheap and it has cost us 657 euros, but we hope it will be worth it in the long run. At the end of the month, we decided it was time to pollard our trees. In case you didn't see that video, we have two beautiful ash trees next to the house that really needed some TLC. And to prune them, we needed the chainsaw to be in tip-top shape. Therefore, Warner bought three chainsaw chains for 19.89, and they came in really handy. We spent the last week of January at home doing nothing except cutting up these trees. And we have calculated that we spent around 8 euros on petrol, motor oil, and chainsaw oil. 
Okay, now that we've looked at what we spend on each day of the month, let's have a look at the overall costs. I've watched quite a few videos of what people spend and something that always gets to me is that if you're only looking at a specific week or month, there could be costs that you're not including just because you haven't spent them then, like clothes, makeup, holidays, etc. But also, you could have exceptional costs that month that are not normally part of your budget. So to get a more realistic view, not only are we going to look at the overall costs and the breakdown of those costs that we had in January, but we're also going to compare them to the averages that I could come up with when looking at all our expenses from 2023. Let's get into it. In January, we spent a total of 583 euros on home costs. This includes our rent, the propane, the firewood, the generator costs, and the septic tank costs. If we take into account that some of these costs are not really going to be necessary in summer, we can assume that living here costs between 500 and 600 euros depending on the month. Therefore, the average cost of this house is of 550 euros a month. Now let's look at the car. There's of course already the cost that we've talked about of the tow bar and the 20 euros we spent on petrol but I also wanted to add our insurance. We pay it once a year and it costs us 393 euros 86 cents. If we divide that by 12 and add the other car costs that means that in the month of January we've spent a total of 720 euros on the car. <laughs> this is painful. <laughs> However because our car is fairly new and in a very good condition we don't expect any major repairs in the coming year so a more realistic budget is of 200 100 euros a month. This includes petrol, the insurance and any upkeep that may come up. Groceries. In January, we've spent a total of 301 euros on groceries. Looking at what we spend on average in 2023, this is quite okay. We actually normally spend 350 euros a month on groceries. However, now we're trying to be a tiny bit more careful with what we spend. So it is possible that we could bring down our monthly grocery expenses to 300 euros a month. As already mentioned, we tend to buy things in bulk once in a while when we need them and when there are offers, and then we get our our fruits and veggies more regularly of course. Our phone bill which I've already gone through does not tend to fluctuate so let's just say it's 63 euros a month regardless of when we're looking at it. Now let's look at fun and fun for us includes eating out, any sort of activity we could do, going to a museum etc. The month of January felt quite exceptional for us because we hadn't spent any money on fun for at least three months and in January we spent 127 euros which is quite a lot. We're trying to reduce this amount as much as possible because our budget just doesn't allow for it right now. But looking at 2023, we've spent an average of 150 euros a month on fun. Now for the category of other or you could also call this shopping. It includes quite a lot of things. In February we spent a total of 196 euros. This includes all the chainsaw costs, the vitamins, the medicine I had to get, as well as the sweater, any shopping I could do that would go into this category. And looking back at what we spent last year, this is quite in line with our normal budget. So for 2023 the average was of 200 euros a month on other or shopping. <laughs> we try to be as conscious as possible with this category and really minimize it but the reality is that you know you, you have to buy little things here and there all the time. And finally Wally and me. This is a very particular cost because I understand that not everyone has a YouTube channel or any sort of online business but I thought I would include it because it is part of our reality. As already discussed this month we spent 120 euros on art list so music for our YouTube channel and this of course is for a year member but there are actually a lot more services that we pay for annually that have to be taken into account. I won't go into detail right now because I want to make a whole video about all the income we have from Wally and Me and also the expenses because there are a lot actually more than I realized. But I've made the calculations and for the absolute basics that we need we are spending 40 euros a month on Wally and Me. However because we do want to improve and get things better the reality is that in 2023 we spent an average of 175 euros a month. This is a lot considering that we didn't have an income to cover those expenses from this channel in the whole year. But anyway,
anyway, that's the reality. If we add up all these figures, it turns out that in January of 2024, we've spent 2,110 euros. If we take out the exceptional cost of the car and we look at the average cost that we could expect based on past expenses, our monthly budget is more around 1,700 euros. I hope this breakdown was interesting for you and that you enjoyed looking at our costs in detail. Now, if all you wanted to know was how much this lifestyle costs us, the video can end here. However, if you want to know a little bit more about what we think about these costs and how they affect us, here's the tea. Okay, babe. So we spend around 2,000 euros a month for our life right now. Ah, that's a lot. Yeah, we've been keeping track of our costs, so I think subconsciously, of course, we knew, but we didn't take time to pay attention to it. Mm -hmm. And it's been preparing this video that has really opened our eyes to how much we spend every month and also to the fact that there's not much we can save up on. This is kind of the baseline cost and it's only going to get worse from here. Basically, looking at exactly how much you spend in your life can give you a new perspective as to if what you're doing in that moment makes sense. When we were living in the Netherlands, our average there was around 2,300 a month. And we were living with family, working all the time. And we didn't do anything. It was COVID times. Like we didn't see friends. We didn't go out. We did nothing. And we still spent so much money. And we didn't have the possibility to even improve our lifestyle because if we did get our own place and like, go out and do more stuff, we would have spent all our salaries on that because of our work situation. So look Looking then at our expenses made us realize that we were not happy just living like that, that that was not worth it for us. And that gave us the courage to leave that life behind and take this step. And we're so glad we did that. Our life here is so much better. But now looking at our expenses again and what we predict is going to come the following months, we are again starting to think, is this what we need in our lives right now? Is this the best decision? And we might have to change directions for a little bit. So the objective of this new lifestyle was to create a new income stream for us in a different way than just working nine to five. And of course, we have to develop that for a while and we'll have to wait till it's a sustainable income for us. And we also have to wait for a while till we can start the construction works because... We don't have the savings right now to undertake them. The builders are busy. We don't have the capacity to do it on our own. No. And we're waiting for permits for our land. So it feels like right now... We're waiting. We're in this in-between period where nothing really impactful is happening, but our money is just flying out the window. Yeah, exactly. That has made us really think about whether we are doing things in the right order. When we quit our jobs and we decided to come here and, and kind of start this new life, living in the countryside wasn't the only objective. We basically wanted to live an alternative life where we would be our own bosses, where we could choose what to do with our time. And there was the component of being in the countryside and you know learning all these skills and renovating a home and creating this this home base which we've been craving for so long but then there was also a component which we've neglected up till now which was traveling and repeating the experience we had a few years ago of, of just leaving Europe and going to see the world. We know that for the rest of our life this place this area will be our base this will be our home but now for the upcoming time for the near future we are really considering if it's useful for us to be here all the time since it costs us quite a lot of money and we're not able to do all the things we need to do to make this home comfortable to the standards we want and to develop the land because we have to wait for that. So whilst we are waiting basically for all these construction works and all these renovation works to happen, is it maybe an idea to just go travel for a bit? We focused a lot on, on building our home base first because it just made sense to us that once we had the perfect home we could go travel and have somewhere to come back to always but now we realize that will take years and that the in-between periods are quite pricey yeah. <laughs> we're spending a lot of money not doing much whereas we could be traveling perhaps in the middle and letting that time pass and coming back whenever it is actually necessary and when we can take big leaps in the home front now we hope you enjoy following along the journey and and getting an insight into how our brain works on how we plan our life. And we do hope this inspires you a little bit in the sense that there are certain life changes you can make by just simply looking at 
amount of costs you have and whether the costs you have are worth it for the lifestyle you are currently living. Is there something you can change in the costs or do you just need to change your lifestyle altogether to make the costs go down or make your happiness go up? Anyway, lots of thinking. Who knew you could turn out what we spend in a month video into a... <laughs> Philosophical debate. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching again and see you next week. Ciao. Ciao.